Di pa kami ikot sa narating namin last pit. Alam ko kaya mag-champion ng Jengski sa PJs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. You're still watching the Pro Gaming Series 2017 Summer Split, powered by Bacchus. Of course, we'll be your shoutcasters for the second match, the uh, uh, second game of the second match. I am Atlas. With me is Arctic. So coming from back from that last game, Mineski at first seemed like they were having a little bit of trouble, but then in the end, with a huge cataclysm coming from Kaigu, they won that for that first game. Yeah, I mean, very interesting game. I, like I mentioned, I give props to Jengski for really showing up in that game. But then again, Mineski, again, because of their line of think and their status, like I mentioned, the experience is really showing. And that being said, you know, it's a really great game one. Game two, um, I have high expectations of both teams. We're definitely going to see yet another explosive match. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was really iffy about the top lane Jarvan at first because I've always seen it in like solo queue in my friends' games. It almost never performs well, especially with a Lulu available for Jenkski. But with a good setup like that, coming from Exosan, the scatter the weak sets them up for a huge Dragon Strike Cataclysm combination. And that really what sealed the deal there for Mineski. So coming into the second game, it seems like they do have the momentum, right? So we'll be seeing how all that plays out. Of course, uh, coming into the uh, picks and bans. Of course, since Jenski now on the blue side with Mineski on a red side, we'll be seeing if the bands and picks will be similar from last game. Of course, we're still running the match and win promo, so just get ready with you with those tabs. See if you can if you are able to get that link properly running uh, for that code, and and if you redeem it, you'll be getting the skin. We'll be seeing the picks and bands so far. I love the adjustment that Mineski made as far as banning out that karma because they know very well that if not bad, it might be a high priority pick for Jenski Esports to just take away from them right away. So instead, I like the precaution that they banned that out instead. Yeah, that will be the karma banned out against Jenski. Of course, when you're red team, you really have a lot more pressure to ban out these champions that are priority picks. Because that Karma is definitely something very powerful. It seems like Jengski will be focusing on that Gragas first, though. We'll be seeing if there are any alternatives. Lulu is available for picking for both of these teams. We'll see if they will be prioritizing. It seems like ha uh, seems like TG will be picking up that Lulu for the second game. Lots of synergy with that Caitlyn within lane. Yeah, I mean, I really like how they're giving such high priority to this Caitlyn right here. If anything, one of the interesting things that I felt that was quite interesting about Jengski earlier was the fact that the Caitlyn over the Varus would have actually been such a great pick to really get their composition going, but because Mineski took that away from them from the first rotation, they had to settle for the Varus instead, which, again, like I mentioned, just having that Caitlyn would have made all the difference for them, so I like how Mineski is still going to stick to that Caitlyn. Seems like we'll be seeing Ivern as well, no longer an Autobahn champion coming to 7.10. So, but looking at the AD carries, it seems like they will not be picking up the Varus here, but rather A style on that Jin. I have not seen Jin a while mm. in pro or semi pro play. We'll be seeing A style on that inside of Mineski. We'll be seeing the Exosin on that Talia. Might be Hames, probably going to be on that not, uh, Nunu if it does get locked in. It will be locked in, so this is actually really scary. Oh, wow. I actually see it now. TG having that Ardent Sensor shielding uh, shielding Zensho with the Blood Boil on him also means that, man, all that attack speed will be very useful. Will be useful as well on Kaigo locking in at Kled. So it's going to be very scary if they get the momentum going. But Jengski has a lot of safety on their side. Whistle on that Graga, Spear on that Ivern. Uh, transitioning away from that really aggressive Rengar into that really support the Ivern might actually do them a lot of work here for the mid lane It will be that echo for the support lots of damage as well incredible lockdown at level 6 post level 6 Will be blaze on that Malzahar and of course a style if he gets his items running That's a lot of huge crits coming from that Jin, so it's still very scary But I also have to give it to Mineski's uh, Composition here both of these is I'm gonna it's, it's gonna be interesting seeing a matchup between Nunu and Ivern. Because both of these are really good at stealing away resources from the opposing jungler. We'll be seeing uh, which one of these uh, which one of these junglers is more effective at doing the rotations on the counter jungles. We'll be seeing all of that. But of course, Spear naturally has more ganking potential as that Ivern. I like how it's actually interesting because I was actually thinking that the Ivern might 
it might be a little bit troublesome to really utilize. I mean, like, it's a very classic composition where you have an Ivern and at the same time another champ that could kind of bring the same utility as far as shields. So, but then again, looking at how Jenksky drafted this, I actually like the synergy. Um, I, one of the champions that I'm really expecting to shine in Jenksky's composition is definitely the Jin because there's tons of frontline, a lot of mm. pool to just really land those curtain calls. The thing is, yeah, like with Ivern, uh, pairs very well with these high uh, utility champions. But of course, Malzar is more on the damage side, more on the lockdown side. But the rest of Jenksky is very survivable. Fade just can just, just chrono break out of trouble. Whistle is very tanky, has some damage reduction. Uh, respectable sustain as well with a passive, well, which means that the rest of them can focus more on keeping A style alive. But Mineski's composition, as I've said, is still also very scary. The Ardent Sensor and the Mud Boil will be very effective on that top lane and as well as the Ada Carry, so it's going to be very scary once they reach that point. But I do think it will come a lot down to how all of them play out their early game, their mid game. Of course, we'll be loading onto the Rift in a little while. Of course, welcome to game two of our second match for today. It's going to be Mineski versus Jenksky Esports. Coming to this blue side, Jenksky, red side, Mineski. Will Mineski be able to keep up the momentum from earlier, or will Jenksky be able to turn the tides of battle and get this 1 1? Oh, yeah, that's definitely something I want to find out in this game. Like I mentioned, <laughs> Jenksky really needs to make some level of adjustment here. Definitely something that they have to do. We'll see how they play out their level one. Seems like everything will be converging here in the bot lane. Definitely something that it seems like they will actually meet here in the bottom side brush. What is this, Aram? <laughs> I don't know. This will oh be man, it is Aram. It's going to be a 4v5 though. Oh dear. Look at all of that first AoE damage come from Jenksky, giving them the first blood. Two kills as well onto TG and Hamez. Definitely, Jenksky had a lot more AoE there, which allowed them to get those two kills. And because Mineski is kind of delayed there, one of their members uh, was not able to get too close in comparison to Jenksky, who was already grouped up five. That was just disastrous for Mineski, giving a first blood also to Blaze and Fade. Man. I like how they kind of mirrored each other going to get. Yeah, they went bot. <laughs> yeah. They both went bot. Let's break that down. Is there anything Again. to break down? They just went <laughs> through all of that AOE. And yeah, I mean. Four man <laughs> body slam. It's crazy, actually, because I, I feel like one of the defining factors there was the fact that it was Mineski that revealed yeah. themselves first. They were the ones that face check, so that's actually huge. So now there's an extra Doran string to fade, which is actually super substantial there in the mid lane. And. Blaze, not as substantial, but getting that Fairy Charm is actually really good. The biggest thing here is the experience that they all shared, and that little bit of gold that's divided between the five of them. I mean, wow. Like, I mean, this will actually be interesting because Exosen definitely has this work cut out for him. With the double Dorans, it makes Fade a little bit more sustainable, not oh, to mention Spear the fact immediately that... immediately going ooh. for a level two. That's going to be TG, a little bit of trouble. He doesn't have his Flash anymore. Blaze gets his third kill of the game. His second kill, man, that's just level. That was just merciless come from Spear. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see how this goes. I, again, this is very signature. Jexy Esports exhibiting a level of aggression within the early phases of the game. But that being said, again, the test here is that whether or not this Ooh. will translate. Whistle kind of misses the body slam there. Kaigu able to win that trade favorably. Of course, the lane is still pushing against him, so it will be a little bit more trouble. Hamez trying to get this blue buff taken away from Spear, but I do think Spear might be here. Actually, Hamez with a consume gets that, but now Fade is going to get onto him. He gets rooted down. Whistle takes the magical carpet right coming there. He has a lot of damage at level 2, but he's not quite enough yet to finish off the kill. Fade a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Kaigu finishes him off, and now it's going to be Hamez and Exosen. Now have the guts to take this 3v2. Spear no longer has any mana. Whistle kind of puts himself in harm's way to Body Slam. That definitely indicates some of that, throw, that early oh, yeah. advantage that Jenksy had as far as the lead that they were established going to win 0 
Going to Ino indeed, but that is just going to be one kill. The biggest thing is that it's on Kaigu, which is the optimal, uh, one of the optimal ways to distribute the kills there in the top lane. Compared to bot lane, it's Blaze getting those two kills. But after all, it is a killer support like Malzahar with lots of damage, lots of magic damage. So that extra bit of uh, gold might actually help them snowball the lane further. But it seems like Zensha and TG playing the lane a little bit safer after that really cheesy gank, level 2 gank coming from Spear. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have to see. Again, it's actually such a shame because Jenkins had a lot going off for them within those first two kills that they got. But that being said, that, that was a little bit tricky for them. And especially for Fade particularly, you know, he had a great start, was 1-0-1, but because of that one death, it actually makes things much more even in this mid lane once yeah, again. Because of this, uh, with the assist that Exosen has, that plus that little bit of uh, lead in terms of CS, I think it actually does balance it out. Like, he's at most behind 200 gold at this point, which is actually not bad. 9 CS lead is equivalent to around uh, 20, uh, 200 gold. So, that's actually pretty good for Exosen, despite being behind a kill. Oh no, it's Kygo weird try trouble, though. though. Oh man, he's gonna get body slammed down just Shouts away from that root caller. Such a shame. That would have actually been a very interesting gap had that transition. But at the end of the day, I mean, again, if this doesn't actually translate to anything, then this will That'd actually be, be now very Now it's with initiative onto the gank against Whistle, completely blocking any chance of him body slamming away. Takes the kill for that Nunu. I'm actually worried for Jenksy because, like I mentioned, one of the phases that they just really shine as a team because of their play style is that early game. But if they're denied that, I'm not yeah, sure how that'll work out here in the bot lane Zensho. They're just trading a little bit there. Zensho losing quite a bit of health. No more potions. On the other hand, Ace Style still has his. Oh no, but here we go. This is oh, gonna be the damage on that. Oh, very dangerous. Oh, he but just looted it down. That might be the Voidlings finish off the job with the Ignite. Here comes TG though. Quite a little bit of damage himself on that Lulu. Seems like it will just be pushing Zentro off of the lane. Had Blaze had the mana and the to, he would have and the resources to just you know just deal the killing blow. That would have been all there. But unfortunately, because he fell short. He was kind of restricted to just auto-attacking, and because of that... Oh, dear, that's quite a gutsy play coming from A-Style. Does not finish off the kill. Death Fart touch, not quite enough. Zensho lives with his health taking red. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, Jenkski, they're really trying to make things happen, though, but because Mineski, again... They're just playing this a little bit more safe. I wouldn't say safer, but they're able to avoid so casual things from happening. And Whistle actually caught out here. Yeah, they're really pushing how much they can do. Exosan gonna try and help out his buddy there to take out the kill. Actually finishes it off with a threaded volley. Perfect there. Perfect timing there with the uh, Weaver's Wall. You can see here, this gives Kaigo a lot of free time here in the top lane. Look at him, 29 CS. That's six over Whistle. Plus he has a kill and two and two assists. It's actually going to be very scary. He has the call as well. So every CS over Whistle, it still means more gold for that Kled. And a fed Kled, a snowballing Kled, is definitely a sight to behold. Oh, has to be very no. careful. Now Hamez quite low. Coming up against Fade and Blaze. Exosen is able to get away. Hamez is able to get away with the help of the Blast Cone. Does not even burn any of his important summoner spells. Indeed. And then again, the score is very equal, 3-3. Three and three. Mm. But again, the good thing about the smite for for that extra heal, in a way, when you smite jungle camps, plus the fact that he has that consume, definitely has a lot more staying power. It's just back to half health here. Exactly. Over half. And because of the way that his passive works, uh, that consume will actually be stronger every time uh, he goes for a volley of auto attacks against a target. Yeah. <laughs> Mineski, I get... Oh, might be Exosan a little bit of danger here. Spear is around for the support. He has to be mindful of where the ghost of that Chrono Break will be going. I'm, I'm actually interested in seeing how Jenkski will be able to transition into this mid game here. Because like I mentioned, when they're kind of up against the wall, or, in fact, at worst, once an enemy has that earlier lead, then that's where they actually become a little bit more careful with the plays that they make because they mm. want to try to make things happen. So but here they're like kind of forcing things. Definitely. And what's worrisome is that if they don't translate to kills or 
worst yet. If it actually results to a turnaround for Mineski, then I don't know how this will just work out for Jenski in the end. Seems like they're doing quite a bit of damage. Curtain Call might be able to finish off TG. <laughs> Tenjo's gonna body block for his support, leaving TG with like five health. Really good attempt though, but yeah, I mean, what's actually interesting here is that slowly the CS difference across sides. Oh dear, this might be a three man or even a four man. Zen, uh, TG's quite healthy after all of that. Let's look at Kaigu, gonna go for the charge here. Cut short by being too close. It's gonna be two teleports from both Fate and Whistle, but here's also Min Exo Zen to make sure the rest of his team doesn't get taken down. Oh, Just a man. little bit of an equalize there. No action. Everyone's okay. Everyone else is here. Let's get out of let's get out of dodge while well, Mineski tries to get some pressure onto this Cloud Drake. Yeah, I mean, oh, oh man, whistle, no, whistle taking quite a lot of damage from the work earth here. That's gonna be quite alone against the rest of his assailants, but Fade and Whistle are pushed away by the threaded volley. Absolute zero pushes them away from the scene of the fight. Oh man, that is gonna be a Drake though for Mineski again. They are just really hustling on this rift. It is Cloud Drake, so not a lot of value, mm. but it will help uh, Exosen and Hamas a lot rotating around the map. It's not a really high priority Drake compared to say Infernal Drake or Mountain Drake, but it is uh, quite synergistic with how Mineski's mid lane and jungle play. Exactly, especially with a Nunu. I mean, it's already bad enough that he has that level of sustain when he's in the jungle because of that. Oh dear, he it looks like again. something will happen right Hamas. here. Plus the Weaver's Wall to just completely block him away. Archstyle does have his flash, but he gets... Ooh. Man, Ooh. he gets Seismic Show back into the fight. Ooh, that's gonna be the 90 caliber net. Just barely missing to prep for a headshot. Fade a little bit too late to the party to catch up and get some kills. It's it's quite a waste actually for Jenkski. Look at all those ticking health bars for Mineski. Definitely. I mean, what really sad here is that Mineski looking... I gotta cut them. They're actually looking a little bit more stronger right now because they're much more decisive now. There's a little bit more confidence. And Jenkski, they're, they're kind of forced into this position because... Their proactivity didn't really work within the first few minutes. They're just forced to just be more active and it's they're really paying the price for it because if Mineski with this decisiveness and Jenkski not being able to respond properly, it, it just causes a lot of problems for them. Yeah, and even though they did get the first blood and another kill on top of that, the biggest problem is that it's still super early in the game, right? So, but the thing is, because it was Blaze that got one of the first kills, it didn't have as much of an impact as it would usually have in a bot lane compared to, say, A-Style getting an extra Longsword or Doran's Blade uh, because of that first blood. And Spear, uh, and rather Faith, getting one of those first kills as well. He does get the, the extra Doran's Ring, but, oh man, this Kaigu might be in trouble here. Oh man, is actually Skarl? Oh. I really like that really uh, weird mechanic. It was purely accidental, but because uh, the explosive cask was the one that sent Skarl away, it allowed it's, uh, it made it made it so Kaigu was not knocked back. Oh. And that's the beauty of oh, looks oh, like man, it is going to be a lot of though. damage onto TG. He has to wild growth onto himself. Going to be Zencio having to body block for his support once again. Except he doesn't have the body block. TG just dodges it away. You know, one thing about Jenkski is, sure, they've been making all these attempts to down Mineski, but it doesn't necessarily translate to kills. I gotta commend them, though. I will give them this, that the fact that they're keeping Mineski on their toes is definitely still something. They're keeping Mineski on their toes, definitely, as Fade gets a kill onto Exosan. It's all a matter yeah, of patience in a way wherein a lot sure maybe a lot of our attempts to take down Mineski haven't quite translated as much but when it does it's like mission accomplished mission accomplished indeed but now it's gonna be Zensho on the offensive here he does have the warlord's bloodlust uh to sustain back up so does a style actually it's not death part touch so that's why he was not able to finish off the kills earlier because he was on Warlord's Bloodlust instead of that Death Bar touch. Ooh, so that is trading a lot of extra damage in exchange for that really sustainable uh, <laughs> consume. <laughs> I mean like... So he didn't even need a smite there. I mean Spears is kind of sad. And you know what's interesting is that usually it's the Ivern that denies chaos, yeah. but the fact that it's Hamas that's denying Spear, not only is that actually quite part of it at the same time it actually causes a lot of problems for Ivern because that key strength that he has which actually makes him really good in the jungle you take that away from him it's he's just reduced to somewhat 
Yeah. This a tree walking across yeah, the thing head. is, uh, Ivern may not have the same power of counter jungling as Nunu, because Nunu is like the counter juggler. He does have a lot more ganking potential, but here it comes. It seems like this jungler is going to be the one that's getting ganked. Has the shield onto him with a trigger seed, but Exosen finishes him off, flashes over the wall to confirm the kill. And that's what I'm talking about. Um, when it's like spear. Ivern says to Nunu, who are you? And then Nunu says, I'm you, but stronger. <laughs> oh, snap. But, but yeah. yeah, but the thing about Ivern is he's a lot more ganking potential, but because of the way that Mineski's been playing, it seems like he's the one getting ganked. He's the one with uh, being forced to have a disadvantage. Mm, that's actually a good point. And again, this just looks to show how smart Mineski plays out their games right from the drafting phase to how they transition that into a game plan when they're in the actual game. But Might be a like fight here. TG once again has to cast Wild Growth onto himself. What is Exosend doing? Going into melee form against all of these assailants. TG takes out plays, the opposing support. Now Fade has to go alone. He no longer has Chrono Break. Gonna get slowed down by that Ice Blast. With Vizentro, gonna try and finish off the kill against him. Fade trying to look for something. But he is behind enemy lines. Finishes off the kill with Ace in the hole. Yeah, kill that was Vizentro. actually very interesting though, because I'm not sure if that was intentional, that Exosen, since he didn't have really have anywhere else to go, just kind of kind of tried to prolong the fight wherein Fade would just commit to him to yes, allow so the other members of Mineski to, to retaliate. Yeah, and leading him to up. Zensho a yeah, little exactly. bit, but I don't think it was necessary to just dash all the way into melee, yeah, melee and, and then lead them there. Could the have just done it while kiting. Exactly, and he was technically running in the opposite direction, so that didn't really give him that many options to actually escape. It was mm. like almost an accepted fate. I'm not sure if it was fate accepted or just a plan to try to make something out of it. I'm yeah, not quite sure. Here, trying to look for something as well here in the bot lane. Can be TG clearing that ward. Because look at everyone here converging here at the bot lane. Seems like four members around this area. Oh, that was actually, again, one of those higher sky rewards there. If that connected, that would have been beautiful. That would have been beautiful, but, but if not, that would have been Zensho and Hamez waiting for them there. Yeah, but yeah, at the end of the day, not only did it not connect, it didn't really translate to anything. If mm. anything, it just revealed his position. <laughs> so it's still going to be Mineski, 4,000 gold ahead. Trying to make things happen while still waiting for Jenksky to make crucial mistakes. The next few minutes, we'll see if that will occur. Kaigu uh, roaming around the lanes here, looking for something. He has a charge up, so he can initiate a team fight if Mineski wants to start a brawl. Okay, what I really like about this is the fact that Mineski really knows how to play around their composition. Now that they're in the mid game, they know that they have a lot more roam potential with this Clyde, yeah. with Exocin on this Talia because of the passive. That being said, I, I'm, I'm just really impressed by, with how Mineski is playing this game and playing to the key strengths of their composition. Yeah, really playing to their win, win conditions here, right? It's because they have Nunu, they have a lot of roaming potential. So let's get a lot of these uh, killer objectives. We've got the Mountain Drake, we've got Cloud Drake. Just keep going for those Drakes every time they're available. And after that, they can roam mid lane or another lane to completely push Ooh. out. Here comes, they're trying to get this Rift Herald, but has to be pushed away with the charge. And the Weaver's Wall is still available here if the, if Exosen wants to block away Jenkski from any chance of a steal. That will be the game plan here. Ooh. Still, Spear is around. Oh, actually, it's going to be Jenkski taking away the Rift Herald. Will they be able to take the eye though? It's gonna be there for a while. It's oh, gonna be a yeah. fight too for that eye. It seems like Whistle will be claiming that. On the other hand, it's going to be Hamez taking that void gaze. Faith dies for the eye of the Rift Herald. Blaze also gets taken down. Whistle now on the run. Exosen gonna want to get some blood. Kaigu as well chasing down that Whistle. It's gonna be A style getting dove here by Hamez. Tanking that turret quite well. He is. Decently tanky. It seems like Whistle might actually get out. Ooh, we'll just have yep. to see though. But yeah, I mean, yeah. again, the hope and a prayer that Jenksky is, despite that, again, this is actually very telling. Mineski actually nearing a 5,000 gold lead in comparison to Jenksky. So one saving factor that they have is if Jenksky can potentially use this Red Herald to try to get them back into this game, then that would be the hope and the prayer that they need. But that being said, considering how Spear used that Rift Herald in the previous game. I'm kind of worried if that'll actually be feasible. Let's look ahead. at how all of that happened. Yeah, I mean, here we go. Because Jenksky was kind of prolonged, 
they were just trying to get to that rip herald that they were just so distracted by that that I mean, it just allowed the Destiny to just topple over them. Yeah, it was an optimal use of the Void Gaze as well. Because Void Gaze was used with Tohamez, which meant Zensho was just free to free hit around. They all ignored Zensho. Zensho was just able to shoot people down, and which led to actually a one fight there despite losing the Rift Herald. And if Jengski is not able to use this Rift Herald to full potential, they will be essentially wasting a potential of like 2,000 gold from two turrets. There we go. And yeah, I mean, ultimately, we'll just have to see how that goes for them. And looking at what's transpiring here, Jengski... I feel okay. Let's go ahead and try to review ways that the Jengski can get back into this game. Of course, first things first, they want to establish a level of defensive vision, vision just so that they wouldn't get caught out by the rest of the members of Mineski. Because if they allow pickoffs, then it'll just increase the lead that Mineski has all the more. That being said, again, it's definitely up to both Blaze and Spear to establish that because. If they don't, it's just going to allow Mineski so much control over this map that they wouldn't have any avenue to just really get into this game. Might be Exo send in trouble, but of course there's going to be five members of the Mineski on their way. Fade has to use a Chrono Break to get out of there, but he's still at half health. Kaigu's going to go in. This target is going to be Spear. He has a lot of shields, but he's not exactly tanky. Double kill to Zensho, going to be the turret as well. It's like... Yeah, it's like the thing that they can get back in this game is just by banking on A-style doing lots of damage, Fade being a nuke, a grenade for them, while Whistle and Spear uh, make sure to keep their important members alive. And Blaze is there to ensure that A-style can de get those kills, Fade as well. It's interesting how those creeps actually got <laughs> caught up in the Weaver's Wall, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, oh, look at damage coming from Exosan here. That's going to be Blaze, the target of the rest of Mineski. Oh, He's no. going to get slowed down constantly by this Ice Blast. And takes Hamez with him on the Blast Cone. So this is just going to be Fate accepted, probably, with all that damage Ooh. can bring out. That's going to be Fate and Whistle on the defensive here. And yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, they do have that potential in style, but because of the fact that because of the lack of vision, they continue to get caught out, mm. and it just negates any potential comebacks that they have if this is a continuing trend for them. So let's go ahead and check out what transpired right here. So Hobbit actually gets a chunk of health on the face because of that absolute zero. But here we go, because of Kaigo on this sled, this is one of the beauties of this right here. You can just go full on ham into these dives right here, and because of that passive on Star, there's a lot more confidence, a lot more survivability when you go into those tower dives that I, other champions don't really have. I really like the thought process behind that dive as well. Because, okay, uh, A-Style and Blaze are mid lane. Let's just go dive 5v3. And they essentially get lots of value from that. Exactly. They get the turret, they get two kills. And in the end, since Zensho had a lot of alone time there bot lane, he was able to get another turret on top of that. Oh, uh, no, Rift Herald actually released to kind of balance out the wave here, whether or not this will actually translate to them getting a turret. With Kaigu actually down in that bot lane, I don't think so. Now, Kaigu will definitely not allow this Ref Herald to take down this bot lane turret. A lot of this control going onto the Baron. They definitely want to take this objective. Exosan might be a little bit of trouble. Ooh. You can get assassinated by Fade. Oh, Seismic Shove. To the other side means that Fade has to give it up because the rest of Mineski, the Goon Squad, is here for the support. It's going to be the Lulu and the Nunu. Lulu Nunu is trying to take him out. Exosan, with the help of Zensho, takes him out. Oh. This might be the Baron. They have the potential for it. That is a Nunu. Has to be very careful, though. Teleport not up for Mineski. And, you know, the problem here is that... Let's compare the stats. Oh, it seems like they will be doing it. It's like indeed. But yeah, I mean, 2 5 and 2 versus the 6 2 dangerous. Is <laughs> we'll just have to see the curtain call popping up. Yeah, they have to cancel it. The threat of that curtain call is way too much. Do not want to repeat any of the mistakes from GPL. But here comes <laughs> more of that. Oh, Zensho gets Void Gaze. Lots of damage onto him. He does get out of there, though with the help of his skills, with the help of the shields. Now it's going to be Spear going on to TG. The Blast Cone saves his life, might be. It's not over the wall, just not quite yet. Zensho still trying to escape with a sliver of his health remaining. Oh no, what? Mission success for Jengski, cancel the Baron. Definitely, but these are just small victories. Whether or not it contributes to the bigger picture of trying Ooh. to get a Kaigu. Yeah, but yeah, as I was mentioning, whether or not this actually translates to 
contributing to the bigger picture, which is to get back into the game. They still have a lot of groundwork. If anything, they just delayed it. Yeah. But it and doesn't necessarily translate to them slowly building up for a comeback. Yeah, there's still 8,000 gold behind. There was still a death onto Spear. And because he's dead, Mineski just comes back to the Baron pit. This is the Mineski pit right now, as Vork exactly. has said. And because Spear is not around, there's no chance for a steal. And there's even less chance of having a good team fight off of this because Spear is so much of their utility. Fade gonna try to go for a hero play, but of course cannot match the consume plus might. Ace uh, barely gets a lot of out of there. Oh man, this is just worrisome. And again, this is something that Jenkski should have learned from during their previous game. Once Spear goes down, especially when that barrel Baron is up, it only spells trouble for Jenkski Esports. That again, this is something they really need to learn how to I mean, from what previous mistake, it's something they should make up the point to avoid. But then again, it's the same error that we're seeing again. And that being said, whether or not it's the miscommunication of Jenkski not grouping up together, or maybe it's Spear allowing himself to continuously get yeah, caught out of He was trying to get the Raptors, which was unnecessary. He knew that Kaigu was around there, so there was really no reason to try and take away the Raptor camp. That's what? 120 gold? It doesn't really help the team much, and it just left them open for a Baron. And that being said, you know, it's just so troubling at this point because technically when you're this behind, you want to restrain on the aggression. And that being said, because of these habits from Jenkski Esports, it just puts them in a more awkward position that, that, they're already, that they already are basically. Mm -hmm. Despite that early lead that they had, they weren't able to transition it. The lead was too small to actually allow the lanes to snowball. So it's now going to be Mineski leading the charge here 10,000 gold they had three drakes as well a variety a good variety of flavors in terms of the drakes as well which allows them for a pretty decent siege here especially with Zencho that might be the start the start of the fight though it is going to be whistle in the middle of everything while A style trying to snipe them away this is actually quite a good fight for Bineski this, this A style all that time has not been DPSing has just been shooting people down with the curtain call but all of this still leaves Everything open for Mineski for this push. Yeah, I mean... Oh, Kaigu trying to go for more. Seems like he might be able to with the help of the rest of his team. Exosan with a burst actually takes him out. And now Fade also gets taken down. This is actually going to just let Mineski push even further. Again, this is this, this is where Jenkski's level of restraint is put to the test. Because they're so used to making aggressive plays, it's only translating to them walking into Mineski, giving them more opportunities for kills to just further the lead right now. And looking at the goal difference right now, it's more than 10,000 yeah, 26 plus three drakes. Mark. This is just... Again, this is hopefully a learning experience for Jenkski where they really need to adjust. Yeah. And yeah, we're going to take yeah, a look at here. They start the fight, but yeah. because A-Style all this time, he's been shooting people, but... Curtain Call does not have the same power as just regular auto attacks when the enemies are this healthy. Which, this is still a 2 for 2 here, but they make a crucial mistake of still trying to defend this against Kaigu, who is so fed, who has a lot, who has no death so far. It's like, and then Fade still tries to go for Exosen. It's like, what happens here is that Jenkski still tried to go SM Orc even when they're 10,000 gold behind. They went face. Me go face. Me no trade. Okay, yeah. And they, and they pay for it. And this is just so troubling. For Again, what I really like about Mineski, though, know, is they know that for a fact that Jenkski has this tendency to make this very Oh, here comes Ace uh, style once again with a curtain call to open up the fight. See, not a lot of damage since everyone is still quite healthy. Whistle might be going for a body slam here, but still. That is not a way to use uh, Curtain Call. Because even if you use the slow, which has been nerfed like a lot of patches ago, it's still not enough to initiate the fight. Indeed. And I really like how Mineski, in a way, there, there's this mind game at the same time that you know that Jenkski really forces to make these oh, plays. Oh, that's going to be the Weaver's Wall. Whoa. How are they going to use it? Might be the block away A style. That's a lot of shields onto the Hamez with that. Absolute zero actually chunks A style down, leaves Kaiku open to push that bot lane. So it's now a 4v5 around this top lane. Fade still gets taken down. Kaigu is still pushing this bot lane inhibitor while the rest of Mineski threaten that top lane with Zentro still at ha uh, full health. Oh man, and you know what's troubling here is that even though Whistle wants to try to deal with this, 
they need it's whistle alone couldn't really deal with a cled right now, especially with okay, Kaigo they have already to send the two members. Exactly. With Kled having the optimal items that he needs to just really skyrocket and do what he needs to do, this just causes a lot more trouble for his JXP. That being said, Fideski oh, playing man. this so methodically well. That is going to be the charge from the flank. Gets blocked by Blaze, however. Here comes Kaigu. He still wants it. He still has the Garden Angel onto him. Now his target is Spear, while the rest of his team takes away this inhibitor. Ooh. A little bit of target. The GA does get popped. That inhibitor is not falling any faster. Taigu does get back into the game with Skarl, however. Curtain call once again up. He actually get, takes down Skarl. That's still gonna be Taigu dying it to whistle. Oh man, and this is very tricky for Jenkski. You're not able to get the inhibit. Inhib. Exactly. And that being said, it only restrains Jenkski to their base that I don't think. Given but the still going that for it. Oh, Exosen. No. Now the cavalry has arrived for Mineski. Now Spear is going to pay the price for that Zen show. Takes away that kill, which leaves this inhibitor way open. Oh, no. And this may potentially be the game. Jenkski, all opportunities to come back or establish pickups. Absolutely fine tuned at this point. And Mineski just top with over here. This is going to be Hamas. Make sure no one can escape. A style. Gotta be the target they're looking for. While well, the rest of the creeps are wailing on those turrets. Look at the threaded volley, the DPS. Ooh. I mean, the Exocet actually gets taken down by the Fountain, but I think that is actually already game set. Unless Fade can take away Zensho at this point. But he's quite protected, he's quite healthy. That Nexus is gonna go down. Fade trying to go for a kill on the Zen Zensho, but it's much too late. Oh. Kaigo gets a kill on them, and then Mineski finish off, finishes off the game for a 2-0. Yes, indeed. That was a great game, a great series. Very well played by Mineski right there, going 2-0. I mean, if, again, this just goes to show how, uh, not just the preparation, but the experience, all coming together to just work in their favor. And Jenkski, still Jenkski Esports, they tried their best, but they definitely have a lot. I'd say this is a learning experience for them. A lot more work to point out what crucial mistakes that they made in that game and try to adjust because the aggression, their signature aggression definitely got them to the top four during the last but what will potentially take them to the next level to maybe make it to Rampage or even GPL is making like fixing those fine-tuning the adjustments that they need to make in order to make up for the because ag aggression can go both ways and it really shows here on the stats here they have to temper their aggression yes because it's good to have a really sharp blade mm. but if that blade <laughs> isn't polished well enough it's not going to it's still going to cut, but it's going to get stuck in a lot of things. There you and that's go. what Jenkski needs to finish, uh, finish is polish their playstyle. Because aggression isn't bad, but the thing is, if you go over aggressive, if you overcommit a lot or take fights you're not supposed to, you're going to get beaten down eventually. I got to commend Exocet here, though. Look at, at that damage. damage. Near 35,000. And Jenkski, again, it's just, it's a learning experience for them. Mm. They are, this is only their second split, so there's definitely a lot more potential and room to improve. So again, it's all about the mindset here, whether or not a team can learn from those mistakes and translate them into strengths once you do pinpoint how to adjust. So yeah, I mean, still, congratulations to Mineski. Great match. Again, very explosive day one that we're seeing here. For yeah, the lots season. of these matches. And next match is going to be IPT versus TME. These. <laughs> Brother teams are going to face it out. It's going to be a Kane and a Bell matchup here for the next match. So first day already, already giving us lots of explosive games. Of course, for that second game of match two, we have been your Shoutcasters. I am Atlas. With me was Arctic. We'll be seeing you after break for match three. This era is going to be a 4v5 though. Oh dear. Look at all of that first AOE damage come from Jenkski, giving them the first blood. Two kills as well on the TG and Hamez. Definitely, Jenkski had a lot more. Ames taking that void base, Faith dies for the Eye of the Rift Herald. Blaze also gets taken down. Whistle now on the run. Exosen gonna want to get some blood. Kaigu as well chasing down that whistle. It's gonna be A style getting dove here by Ames. Tanking that turret quite well. He is decently tanky. Seems like Whistle might actually get out. Well, Kaigu's gonna go in. This target is going to be Spear. He has a lot of shields, but he's not exactly tanky. Double kill to Zentro, gonna be the turret as well. It's like, yeah, it's like the thing that they can get back in this game. The fight, though, fight is gonna be Whistle in the middle of everything while a style trying to snipe them away. This is actually quite a good fight for Vineski. This 
his A style all that time has not been DPSing, has just been shooting people down with the curtain call. But all of this still leaves everything open for Mineski for this push from the flank. Gets blocked by Blaze, however. Here comes Kaigu, he still wants it, he still has the Guardian Angel onto him. Now his target is Spear, while the rest of his team takes away this inhibitor. Ooh. A little bit of target, the GA does get popped. That inhibitor is not falling any faster. Kaigu does get back into the game with Skarl, however. Curtain Call once again up, he actually takes down Skarl. That's still gonna be Kaigu. Dying yes, he's top of them here. This will be Hamas. Make sure no one can escape. A style gonna be the target they're looking for. While well, the rest of the creeps are wailing on those turrets. Look at the threaded volley, the DPS. I mean, the Exocet actually gets taken down by the fountain, but I think that's actually already game set. Unless Fade can take away Zensho at this point. He's quite protected, he's quite healthy. That Nexus is gonna go down. Fade trying to go for a kill on the set. That shit is much too late. Kaige gets a kill on them, and then Mineski finish off, finishes off the game for a 2-0.